We're going to focus on derivatives today. We will get to integration, but we don't have really the time today um, or the mental or emotional space. So we'll just focus on the derivatives and the integrals will come afterwards. This is y equals sine x. Everything we need to know about the trigonometric functions will start with sine x and we will expand from there. So that's why you can see I've drawn it. And what we're going to do, before I just show you results, um, we want to use our intuition. Uh, someone really smart told me once upon a time, if you've got a problem, you should always try guessing first. Just try a guess. See what your gut tells you because, go away, um, if you guess, and you're right, you'll be like, I'm freaking awesome. And if you're not right, you'll be like, hmm, now what was wrong with my intuition? And you'll learn something. So that's, that's pretty good, right? Yeah, not that kind of, I said if you had a question like this, right? Not like, what will happen if I jump off this cliff, okay? That's not the kind of intuition I'm referring to. So here's y equals sine x, and what I want us to do is think about the gradient function of this graph, because that's all the derivative is trying to find, right? Now. A lot of this we don't know about, but there are some particular points on this graph where you can not just roughly, you can exactly tell me what the gradient will be at those points. Have a look. I count on the part that I've drawn, I count one, two, three, four spots exactly where you should be able to tell me what the precise gradient is. Can you see them? An origin is one. Ah, okay, now we'll come to the origin shortly. But actually, unless you've done this before, if you're coming to this just like I am right now and like, I don't know what the derivative of this thing is, then you do, know, no, you do not know what the gradient is here. But if you look at four other points, namely this one, this one, this one, and this one, you should know exactly what the gradient is at those points. What's it going to be equal to? It should be zero, because what kinds of points are those? They are stationary points, right? Uh, local max, local min, etc. So at those points on this same graph, I'm going to put that's a zero there for the gradient. That's what my other color is going to be. Here's another spot where the gradient is zero, and so on. Okay. Now I'm going to go one step further. Um, I just did a very rough graph. I didn't put any values on there, but you actually know those values, right? Because we've been dealing with the sine curve for a while now. We know what its amplitude is. But in radians, and I'm going to come back to why it's radians in a minute, in radians, I wonder if you know those spots well enough to know their values. What's um, this first stationary point? What's its value? It's x value. It should be pi on 2, right? 90 degrees? Because if you think about it, here's 0 to 360, yeah? Well, oh, sorry, there's 360. So that's a quarter of the way there. So that's 90 degrees, that's pi on 2. Let's, let's write that in. Pi on 2. Okay. Your next one over, what's that stationary point? That should be 3 pi on 2, right? Because look, it's 1, 2, 3 of them. So I'm going to write 3 pi on 2. Um, these ones out here are not in the normal domain in which I draw, but uh, I think we can work them out, right? Because for example, this next one is, there's 3 pi on 2. I got another pi on 2 and another pi on 2, so it should be 5 pi on 2. And what about this one back here? We don't usually draw this part. Negative. Yeah, it's just, you can see the symmetry of it, can't you? So I'm going to put negative pi on 2 over there. Okay, so far so good. So I know a bunch of spots where the gradient is 0. But I can go more than that, right? Do you notice in between those stationary points, some parts of sine are increasing and some parts are decreasing. So when a function is increasing, what does that tell you about its gradient? It's going to be positive. It's going to be above the x-axis, right? So where's a spot that you can see where you have an increasing function? There's a whole bunch. Pick one. Between... 0 to pi on 2, that's increasing. I think you could make it even bigger than that, couldn't you? Like, I can see that this section here is also increasing. Do you get that? From here all the way up to here, it's increasing. Okay. So with this color, which is my gradient color, I'm going to show that up here, the gradient should be positive. Okay. By the same logic, but in reverse, having a look between pi on 2 and 3 pi on 2, what can you tell me about the gradient there? It's decreasing. Okay? And then predictably, you get it reversing and coming back up here. Now, this is interesting, right? The gradient seems to be doing the same thing over and over again. It hits zero, 
a whole bunch of times repeatedly and there's no reason why it wouldn't continue doing that and also seems to be doing this up and down and up and down right in other words it's periodic the gradient seems to be repeating over periods of time why would the gradient be periodic because it's because the function I'm thinking about right now, the sine curve, it's periodic. So therefore, it stands to reason that its gradient ought to be. Now think about this for a second. The gradient function is a periodic function. It goes up and down and up and down. And it goes through these particular x-intercepts, pi on 2, 3 pi on 2, etc. If only I knew a function that was periodic and went up and down and up and down and had these particular values that it passes through. Does anyone know one that does? Have a look. Starts up here and then it goes down and then it comes up. That sounds a whole lot like cosine, right? And just have a think about this. If you were to draw cosine in here, right, it would look something like this. Uh, where am I up to? Here we go. There's cos x, right? Now we've filled in a whole lot more, but it goes through all of the zeros, all of those intercepts. It goes through all of those regions that I painted, and it even tells you a little bit more. For instance, we looked at stationary points, but the sine curve also has points of inflection. Can you see where they are? Have a look at those points of inflection. Where are they? I'll use a different color. I can see a point of inflection, say, here. Do you see the inflection? Can you cover up? I'm going to borrow your book. All right. Sorry. Thank you. If you cover up uh, this spot here, looking at that blue curve, right? That's sine. Do you see that's concave down? Clearly, there's the concave down section. And then if I go on the other side, there it is. That's clearly concave up. You see the change in concavity? Yeah. That's a point of inflection. Thank you, Arian. You've got a whole bunch of other ones. Like there's one. There's one. Have a look at what cosine does at those points of inflection. Do you see that it's got a stationary point? Is this ringing bells from when we gave you questions like, here's a graph, tell me the derivative, right? And then tell me the derivative of that. It's exactly what we ought to expect. So our intuition tells us this, but intuition is not enough in mathematics. We need to press a little further in.